town hall quoted you today saying the president, you, you said complimentary things about President Trump, needs to tell Kevin McCarthy that, sir, you do not have the votes. It's time to withdraw. Let me turn the tables, Congresswoman. Kevin McCarthy has 202, three votes. Your side has 20. So if I'm going to use your words and your methodology and your math, uh, isn't it time for you to pack it in and your side to pack it in, considering he has over 200 and you have 20? Sean, I understand the frustration, I promise you. But I'm not um, frustrated. He does you didn't not answer my votes. question. And we are hearing, we I'm are not, hearing I'm from many frustrated. people who are still voting with Kevin McCarthy, who You're are not very answering my question. of what we're doing, and they're cheering us on. So there are more for us than are against us, and they are waiting for Kevin to cave. Okay. Um, you know, the American people are certainly frustrated by. I'm frustrated ahead. by you not answering a direct question. You said to President Trump, you, you said earlier today that President okay. Trump needs to tell and Kevin, Kevin McCarthy, McCarthy does not have you the don't votes. have the we votes. We need to come up Hold with a consensus can I finish? candidate to elect a can speaker I of the House. You don't have the votes and it's time to withdraw. He has 203. Your side has 20. Why is it time for him to withdraw and not you when he has so many more votes? Well, Sean, he needs 218 and he does not have 218. We've been trying Neither to work do you. this out. You just watched Sean Hannity grill Lauren Boebert, and he pulled no punches. The gloves came off, and it's really interesting to see this Republican on Republican violence on Fox News because they are the PR unit of the Republican Party. So for them to viciously go after one of their own is uh, pretty interesting. But what's also fascinating to me is the response from Fox News' audience because they did not take kindly to Sean Hannity grilling Lauren Boebert. And when you look at the response that Marjorie Taylor Greene is getting, Charlie Kirk is getting, it's evident that most of the GOP base, at least online anyways, is siding with the 20 Republicans who don't want to support Kevin McCarthy under any circumstances. So we'll talk about that element of this story. But first, more from this interview, because believe it or not, it got even uglier. If by Friday you and your group of 20 don't have a name with 30 votes, is it time for you to withdraw? And if not, why do you support a double standard? Last question. Kevin McCarthy does not have 218 votes. Kevin McCarthy and you will have, not and be you speaker. And you have 20. I, Kevin I McCarthy asked you a very specific question. If by Listen, Friday when we, when we you get don't this have right, 30. I will not, Sean. I will not withdraw. Our asks not. Were, were not petty of Kevin McCarthy. They were not self-serving. We simply were asking for commitments on what the American people want to see. They want to see a vote on term limits, a vote on the Texas border plan to secure the southern border. You, and for crying out loud, respect, Sean, we asked for a vote on a budget that actually balances. Imagine, imagine a Congress that stops so spending money that we don't have. So if you only have 30 people supporting you. We are going to get this you, right, and we are going to get the right speaker, Sean. If you only have 30, to be clear... You will not withdraw. Is going to be a beautiful number but you're to telling reach. Kevin McCarthy and the and the 203 people that support him to withdraw because they don't have 218. That's what you're saying. Look, it's obvious by tonight's motion motion to adjourn that Kevin McCarthy and his supporters are already getting you, voter fatigue. And I, I, I'm, I asked I'm you here a simple it. question, Congresswoman. I, I, you know, I feel like I'm getting a, a liberal. I'm not going an to support from Kevin McCarthy, Sean. Okay, so even if you only have 30 votes, Kevin McCarthy. you will not if abide by what you told President standing, Trump to which abide I don't believe by. I, I got will it. Be, I feel I like we've made progress. Not, look, I love President Trump. You're not going to turn me on him. You're not going to pit him against me. I'm not trying I to pit you. him against you. President That's what Trump, you said to him. And I am standing... I have You're the seen one the that said it to trust. him. Look, Sean, you can ask her tough questions. You can push back against her. You can grill her. But to say that she's acting like a liberal, that's just the bridge too far. Completely unacceptable. <laughs> I love how that's like a gotcha. You're acting like a liberal because you're not answering questions as if that's like uncharacteristic of any politician, regardless of their party affiliation. But there is a different point in the interview where Sean Hannity says, look, you want all of these things from Kevin McCarthy and you don't believe that he's going to deliver when it comes to your policy priorities, even if this is about policy. But I don't think it is in actuality. But either way, Sean Hannity points out that Kevin McCarthy has given you an insurance policy. Just five members can recall him as speaker. So if you don't like what he's doing, if you think that he's lying to you currently, you can easily recall him because he agreed to that. But 
she's still not agreeing and it just makes her makes her look really unreasonable and it gets worse for the 20 republicans to just normal people who are watching because kevin mccarthy caved to even more demands cnn's manu raju reports mccarthy proposes key concessions allow just one member to call for a vote to oust the speaker per two sources more members of freedom caucus to serve on powerful house rules committee and promises to vote on some bills like term limits and border security so he's given them everything that they wanted but at the time that i record this video he lost for the eighth time. So at this point, there is literally nothing that McCarthy can do to appease them. That's why normal people see this and they view these Republicans as unreasonable. But the base, at least the online portion of the GOP base, is in lockstep with folks like Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert, and they are against individuals like Sean Hannity and Marjorie Taylor Greene. Let's take a look at the like to dislike ratio on that particular video. It was absolute insanity. So it got 22,000 dislikes and less than 7,000 likes, and Fox's audience voiced their displeasure with Hannity. And I've got a couple of examples here. So she wiped the floor with him, and he desperately tried to get control but lost. It looked pathetic. Sean also showed contempt for anyone not on board with the globalists. I'm not surprised Hannity did this interview this way. Hannity, we conservatives don't want McCarthy. Hannity is showing his true colors right in step with the rhinos. I've been a Fox viewer for almost 20 years and I can't believe Sean Hannity still has a job. And that seems to be the overall sentiment by the right, at least online. I don't know what normie Republicans would have to say about this, but at least the ones online, the most kool-aid drinking mouth breathing uh psychopaths who are far right they absolutely do not want kevin mccarthy under any circumstance so no matter how much he buckles no matter how many concessions he offers they simply just don't want him as speaker and there's another example of the base turning against anyone who endorses mccarthy take marjorie taylor green for example on january 4th she tweeted we are on day two and the same never kevin group is now on their third speaker candidate people are truly beginning to realize they have no plan and they are sick and tired of trust the plan that's a complete secret and never produces results now i'll show you some responses to that but i just want to pause i hate to say this again but marjorie taylor green is correct because after the seventh vote or maybe the eighth vote at this point in time matt gates nominated trump to be speaker i mean trump is not going to be speaker of the house so at this point in time they're throwing in the faces of all of their gop colleagues that they don't care that they're holding up the party and making all of them look childish they're just they're fucking around at this point and they're enjoying it and uh, it doesn't matter. The base seems to be with them. So let's see some responses from Marjorie Taylor Greene supporters. You've reached Dan Crenshaw levels of disappointing. Folks in your corner took arrows sticking up for you for years. And in record time, you've undone all that goodwill. Been real. Wrong. People are proud that 20 reps don't want the same tiring status quo in Congress, of which you seem to have morphed into. You should notice you've lost a lot of support, MTG. A lot. Cheers to the 20, and I've always liked you, but this doesn't look good on you. You sold out, Marjorie, and probably my favorite here. What happened to you, Rep MTG? Did you get bought off? You are not the person I came to know and love. You're supporting a World Economic Forum candidate? I thought you represented the US. Oops, I guess someone found your quote, price point, dot, dot, dot. This whole debacle is tearing the Republican Party apart, and I just, I can't state enough how much I am loving every second of this. Even right-wing propagandists who have brainwashed these people are learning real quickly that if they're not in lockstep with the 20 Republicans who are objecting to McCarthy's speakership, they're going to get flamed. Let's listen to Charlie Kirk read one of his uh, viewers' messages because this was amazing. Now, someone says here, Charlie, lots of swear words in this email. Screw you. You support Kevin McCarthy. You're part of the problem. Kevin McCarthy's a lying rhino SOB. Stop supporting this scumbag. Sincerely, Mike Francis. Understand the energy. I understand the vim and vigor there. However, let's be accurate about what I support. I support concessions to make the most conservative Congress in American history. Lots of swearing in that email. <laughs> I love it so much. So if you dare to try to be reasonable here and just go with the flow and support McCarthy after he's given you everything that you wanted, not just concessions with regard to policies and votes on policies, but rule changes, po powerful committee assignments, then um, 
you are going to get flamed by the base. But I would be remiss to point out that even if this has led to increased GOP infighting, there has been some new potential friendships that have maybe began to grow along the way. Look at how Ben Shapiro talked about Marjorie Taylor Greene. This led to a, a very weird sort of political realignment that's been happening right now. And that political realignment is between people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's actually siding with McCarthy because she says, listen, we have to have a speaker of the ha I mean, she actually sounds like the reasonable person now, Marjorie Taylor Greene. She, she's chiding McCarthy's opponents and saying, you guys don't have a plan. Like, who is it that you're putting up there? So he said that she sounds like a reasonable person. Marjorie Taylor Greene, the ball's in your court. Will you apologize for saying that a Jewish space laser caused wildfires in California? I mean, maybe we could see a new alliance form here. Either way, this is incredibly embarrassing for the GOP because we are on day three and there's still no speaker. The House of Representatives cannot function without a speaker. Members aren't even sworn in without a speaker. On the first day, we saw kids bored out of their minds sitting on the, in the house chairs because they were waiting for their parents to get sworn in, but that could never happen because there wasn't a speaker. So either way, I've made this point before. I'm going to make it again. I hope that they just go as long as possible without a speaker because even if they choose someone who they all agree on, it doesn't matter because Republicans only control the House of Representatives. Anything that they pass that Democrats don't like can be rejected by the Senate or ultimately Joe Biden. So they're not going to accomplish anything. The main priority for these Republicans is to do all of these frivolous investigations into Democrats and possibly impeach Joe Biden. But Kevin McCarthy is already saying he's going to do those things. So I just... I don't know what the end game is, but regardless, the outcome is going to be the same here. So, so long as they continue to delay and make the Republican Party look foolish and childish and completely just unreasonable, I'm all for it. So I hope that this drags on even longer. I'm here for it and I'm loving it. I'm going to come. Do not come. 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 Welcome to the Come Zone. Ah, ah.